Welcome to the Adjunct CEO Podcast with your host, the Adjunct CEO, Dean Akers. Tips, ideas, and interviews with top leaders to help you and your business when results matter. Well, welcome back uh, to another show this week. Um, I'm really excited. Um, again, the response has been incredible. I've got a lot of downloads which uh, is all new to me. Um, this is an exciting journey. Uh, I hope everybody out there listening is is gaining some information from uh, the adjunct CEO and our processes. Um, the show's coming up. We're going to have a lot of different uh, things we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about the three legs of a business, which is sales, marketing, operations, and finance. Uh, we've got some great material coming up on marketing strategies. I've got a number of just fabulous interviews set up. But before I really move into that in the next coming episodes, I got a lot of calls <clears throat> and a lot of emails on this three-circle process. Our first couple of shows are three circles in the PV process. And while it may seem relatively simple to me, it seems like that I need to, to just reinforce uh, the thought process on it. Because to me, it's infinitely simple. And I think sometimes it being so simple can create confusions. So we're going to run through today an overview of it. And you can go back to the other two episodes, the one on the three-circle process and then the one on the PVs and listen to them more in depth. But I want to remind everybody that this process I deployed when I was a young man and deployed in every company I've been the head of or involved in driving, and the successes have been exponential, not just lineal, exponential. And so I really want to encourage everyone out there to, 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 to just go through the steps. So we're going to start with the three circles. Again, the three circles is fairly simple process. Draw three circles on a piece of paper. In the first circle, put your annual sales. If you're a company, put your sales in there. If you're a, um, uh, a um, salesperson, put your annual sales in that circle. Then go to circle three, and that's where you want to put in the gross sales uh, for your marketplace. Uh, I was with an individual today, and she was going over her business, and she was talking about her sales, and she was telling me the things that was wrong with her products, and this is, she's not unique in this, and, and she was telling me why her sales had not taken off because of some unique situations. When we did the three circles, we found out that, uh, quite frankly, she wasn't even a rounding error. She was below a rounding error. So the reason I share that is, is, is in reality, in reality, um, her, her talk or her self-talk on what her challenges were probably had zero to do with it. So again, your first circle is your sales. The third circle is the sales of what you could sell if you had 100% of the market that you're selling into. Again, it could be geographic, it could be product or whatever. So again, that basically tells you your market share. Then on the first circle, <clears throat> go back and look at all the lost sales you had. And you need to really track lost sales. I can't reiterate that enough. You need to map out every sale you lose. You can make whatever excuse you want, price, whatever you want. <clears throat> but at the end of the day, you want to measure that against your closings. Because you'll be shocked to find out that you're actually closing generally a lot higher percent than you give yourself credit for. So that first circle represents the market you play in, those sales you got and the sales you truly lost to a competitor for whatever reason. And then you take the third circle. The, the subtraction of the first circle from the third circle equals the second circle. Again, my whole focus in business always is on that second circle because that's a circle that tells me how I'm doing. That's the circle that I'm only losing the business for one reason. I'm not losing it because my product mix. I'm not losing it because my product's not as good or better than or whatever the reasons I think. I'm only losing it because the customers don't even know I exist. They're not even 
reaching out to try to source me against their current supplier or whatever they use. And I see it every day. I, one of the examples I did with one of my buddies the other day, we were talking about it, and he goes, oh, no, it's always price. So we got in the car, and we drove to a Target. We walked in, and we got the prices of 50-inch TVs. Then we went to Walmart, and we got the prices of 50-inch TVs. And then we went to Best Buy and got the price of all their 50-inch TVs. To no surprise, probably for anybody listening, those prices prices were all over the board. So in theory, if it was just a pricing situation, everybody would have bought those that we saw at Target that were on special for, I think it was 225 bucks for a 50-inch TV. Crazy number. Beat Walmart, everybody else. However, when I asked the people in each one of them, are you selling 10, 20 of these an hour or a day? Now we haven't sold that many is the answer. So again, what we know, what we know is, is that being on the deal is key. And that's what your retailers do. They try to get you in. They get you into the store. They'll have pricing things and different, th- different methods to get you into the store. Or you're a loyal buyer. You come in because you like the buying experience. The same with business to business. We've got to figure out how to get on these deals. And that's just really our responsibility, bottom line. So that's our three circles. Do that exercise. Again, if you have a challenge, reach out to help at adjunctceo.com. Send me your challenge. I will give you a no-charge kind of review of it and uh, try to help you out. Then we come, after the three circles are done, now we get into PVs. PVs, again, take that first circle, the customers you have, and quite frankly, the customers you've lost business with. You take your top group of customers, the ones that drive most of your business, and you profile them. You want to look exactly what they do because what they do, they're obviously using you. And in a lot of cases, I see people fragmented. We were joking with a group the other day, and they were talking about opening in Phoenix. And we were able to determine that they had a small market share just in the Tampa Bay area. The last place they need to go is Phoenix. When they've gotten all the business here, then maybe you go to Phoenix or maybe you go to Atlanta or maybe you go somewhere. But when they had such a small market share, they could take the same energy, focus it back here and quadruple their sales and never have new expense for facilities, uh, remote uh, management and all that. Again, once they master it, it's a perfect business to build separate branches across the country and scale the company and make a lot of money. But you've got to master your own backyard. So with the PVs, what you're putting down is a list of your current customers, what they bring you in sales, what percent you have. So if most of them, you're going to have 100%. And then you start the list of all those that you don't have. And you Google and you find out that... ABC or whoever does the exact same kind of business. Put them all down. Then there's some way to quantify their value. If it's by employee count, if your biggest customer has 50 employees and you do a million with them, and this other potential company has, a, you know, 100 employees, then value it at 2 million. It's not accurate, but for our purposes, it gets the point across that there's business out there of greater than your largest customers that mirror that absolutely mirror your largest customers that you don't even get a shot at their business. So you take that, and with that, you now are putting together your PVs in conjunction with your three circles. So now you're starting to define that center circle. And keep in mind, most companies' market shares are rounding errors. So this is a real great exercise. It's a very eye-opener. And the reason I wanted to review it is I've had so many questions, so many I don't get it. And I guess to me, it's really simple. You take three little circles, you put your sales, the sales you for sure lost, the ones where you quoted and lost in circle one. You take circle three and you put the gross amount of sales of what you sell in the marketplaces that you're in. And that's just a factual number or close to it. And the key circle to focus on is circle two. That's the sales you lost for one reason and one reason only. 
they didn't even know about you or you didn't know about them. They don't even have a chance to know your quality. They don't have a chance to beat you up on price. They don't have a chance to not like you because you're not the best in the industry or they don't have a chance to like you because you are the best in the industry. Again, all those things that you think are important, this big segment and segment two have no idea about. So the three circles. Then once you've taken that, to help you accelerate the process, you build your PV list out. And your PV list takes your largest customers, and then you start mirroring all the customers you could have and what your estimated sales would be with them if you had all their business like you do with your current customers. And that's going to tell you that there's a huge amount of business out there that you don't even know about because you're not even on it. Now you've identified it. And I wanted to do this review today because, again, if I hadn't got all these emails, questions, had several meetings in the last couple of weeks on this, I would <clears throat> assume that it would be a fairly simple process, at least in my mind, to understand. Easy for me to say because I've been doing it since I was in my 20s. So you could say almost 42 years. I've used it in all my companies. It's the first thing I do. And if I was working with you or at your company or helping you out, that would be the first steps we would do. And it would be in writing. It wouldn't be a, a conversation that we just talked about. We would deep dive it and get that information. So if you want to reach out to me, it's uh, help at adjunctceo.com, help at adjunctceo.com. I'll be glad to give you a, an overview uh, just to help you out. And um, again, thanks for listening to my podcast. Thanks for downloading it. Uh, this is something that I'm really passionate about is helping businesses and, um, and helping people grow their business and, and grow their profitability. So until I see you next time, uh, keep on getting those second circle filled out. Get to those customers. Go lose those sales. If you're actually losing all those sales, I will be so proud of you because at least I know you're on them. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. We hope you enjoyed today's show. Make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. If you have any questions or need some help, just email help at adjunctceo.com. Thanks for tuning in.